Hey, Topping Your Life's Math and History, and we are going to take a look at logarithms, but they're harder. So we've been learning about the different logarithms in the last video. We've been learning how to solve them, evaluate them, and understand them. We also understood that there were some kind of restrictions that didn't allow us to continue some of the problems in the last video. So what we're going to do is go right to the problems. So the log base of 8 will drive me to x and it's going to equal 3. What is going to be x? In this case scenario, this is a lot easier than we thought it would be. Because what we could say is this right here is the exponent that it gave us. So 8 to the power of 3 equals x. 8 to the power of 3 equals 512. The x is called the argument. And if you think this is incorrect, I think you should argue on the comments below. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> but the reason why we said that this video is a lot harder is because if you were to take a <gasps> this kind of problem. So how are we supposed to solve this kind of problem when there are fractions in play? Hmm, well, a while ago, we've been looking on radicals and understanding how to simplify radicals. We have a 6 to the power of 5, and from that video, what we could do is transform everything. We can say the 6 is going to, the x is going to go to the left side, and that is going to equal 64. We could say that the x is also going to have 6 over 5 because that is going to be right over here. But in order to make this more true and to help us understand what the simplified answer is, we can kill the exponent and exterminate it by exploding the exponent by multiplying by the reciprocal. So here's what happens. We have to multiply the 64 and have it to the power of 5 over 6. So, here's what's going to happen. There are two formulas that we could take a look at. The square root of x, the radical, and the power, or we could say the x and the power divide by r. Hmm. If we were to use those two formulas, Here's what's going to happen. The 6th root of 64, and then we have to parenthesize that everything thing by 5. Because the 5 is the numerator, and the 6 is the denominator. But not only that, the 6 is going to be the r, and the 5 is going to be the p. That is going to be the r for 6 and 5 for p. Now, all we have to do is simplify this. What we could also do is, when we simplify, it will bring us to, hmm, what to the 6 will get me the 64? Yeah, 2 to the 6th, or just 2, because 2 to the 6th is 64, so 2. But uh-oh, we still have that 5 that we haven't used yet. So guess what happened? 2 to the 5th power is going to equal 32. So x should equal positive and negative 32 because the radical rules still apply. We're trying to get rid of the radical of an even number. So it makes a lot of sense. But there is one little problem. We're actually breaking a lot of rules. If you take a look at the logarithm rules, we could log on and say that b cannot be a negative number. b cannot be 0, b must be greater than 0, and we could also say b has to be a positive number. So, we're going to say reject negative, tw negative 32 because it doesn't fit those conditions. We're going to keep it as x equals 32. Okay, pretty good. And we're done. Let's take a look at a few more. So, the problem right over here 
Whoa, this kind of logarithm is different because it has a quadratic into the equation. But what are we supposed to do when they're quadratics? You might panic at first, but what happens if we can rearrange the problem so we can log on with the problem and make it easier? Here's what happens. We have the log symbol, which is L-O-G. We have a base. We can argument whatever this is called and the number 4. Since the 4 is the exponent of what basically the logarithm says, we're not trying to find the exponent. We're trying to find the x marks the spot. So we can say 3 to the power of 4 should equal parentheses x squared plus 17. So yeah, no more crazy numbers. So we can easily solve this out with a simple algebra problem. 3 to the power of 4 is going to be 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, 81. And that's going to equal x squared plus 17. Subtract by 17, subtract by 17, and we have 64 equals x squared. We square root the x, we square root the 64, and x should equal positive negative 8. But wait, 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 negative 8. Let's see if it's breaking any rules. So, you can't have a negative as a letter B. You can't have a 0 as a B. And a B must be greater than 0. A has to be greater than 0. Hmm. <gasps> Guess what happens? Since that we're trying to find what the X is, and we can say that the negative 8 is here, negative 8 plus 17 is going to be 11, and 8 plus 17 is going to be more, definitely more than 0, with a value of 25. This means we're not breaking the rules, we're following the directions, because we only have to worry about negatives and positives, if we're dealing with the base right here, which doesn't seem so basic to kind of memorize. You kind of have to look at the rules over and over. So here's our final answer. X equals positive and negative A. I hope this video has helped you understand logarithms, but they're harder. Thank you for watching Taoping Airlines Math Industry. Like and subscribe.